Good morning and a warm welcome to my welcome to my distinguished chairman of the Accredited Colleges. We have been, I'm also an inviting, so I won't really be this person, but because it's been conducted in this empty building, therefore it's my duty and pleasure to welcome you here. The effort that UPT Watch has been putting in, I really commend them and especially the dedication and the passion forward with which they are doing it. It is something to be applauded, something to be commended. I also want that as per the current <coughs> Until and unless <coughs> those who have been the beneficiaries of education, of various facilities, of social progress, of the fruits of Development, I think it is our moral, ethical and legal obligation that we try to think about those who have not benefited from such activities. I am sure each one of us, in our own hearts, in our own mind, is thinking of doing something as a part of the social responsibility, as part of the corporate social responsibility. To actually create an edifice that will be inclusive, that will ensure that those people or those children who do not see the face of the blackboard or those children who do not have the advantage of coaching or those children who do not have the advantage of being guided tutored, mentored, or even advised, they get a holding hand from us. It might sound emotional or it might sound very, very idealistic, but I think if we miss this chance, the trouble will be for us. What is happening today in Egypt we must be very, very cautious about that thing, also spreading in India. I'm not trying to be a doomsday sayer. I'm not trying to say something which is totally amiss, but I'm trying to only say that it's better to be forewarned, it's better to be forearmed, it's better to be proactive, it's better to be intelligent and therefore whatever it and educated we must do it. All of you have made a great contribution to the educational spectrum of India. You have contributed your might, you have contributed your financial strength, you have contributed your energy and you have contributed your ideas. And it is probably high time that we recognize you as our partners, as those who have fulfilled that small gap which was lying there between the social good and what the planned economy was for. I'm sure there are miles to go. We have lots of items which have not been done as yet, but have not been even touched as yet. And that is probably we want to start a new chapter here. Many of us are on the verge of retirement, but many of you are young, are talented, are having a dream, are trying to give this country a new dimension, a new thought, a new identity. 
And that identity, that thought, and that dynamics needs to be brought in to a very, very fruitful and logical conclusion for which I don't think that when we are trying to talk in terms of that by 2020 the country must have the gross enrollment ratio of the order of 20 percent. I don't think it's a simple task. Today the gross enrollment ratio stands at around 11 percent. You can understand this almost doubling. What we have done in the past 60 years has to be done in the next 10 years and it's not a small order. The population of India in 2020 is projected to be at around 1.5 billion and providing 20% of the population with higher education enrollment is going to be a Herculean task has never been done on the face of earth by even the greatest powers that are there who have all the resources in the world. But I believe that it is not only the monetary resources, it is not only the resources of buildings, but it is basically a will. If we have the will, nobody expected that India which used to have 4% growth could achieve even 8% growth, but we have done it. Nobody thought that India, which was suffering from malnutrition, was having chemi, would be surplus in food, but we have done it. Nobody thought that India would be one of the leading countries in milk production, in horticulture production, in wheat production and in fish production, but we have done it. Nobody thought that India would be one of the countries which would launch a satellite around the earth, but we have done it. Nobody thought that India would be having nuclear weapons, but we have done it. Nobody thought that India would be rising to be the fourth economic power, but we have done it. So it is not really that we have not met the challenges, it's not really that we have not been able to successfully demonstrate our collective will. It's only that we need to take it up and we need to take it up as a mission. Once again, thank you for coming over here. I will not take much of time. I would now ask Mr. Rago to start the proceeding. Thanks a lot, sir.